This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Are You Scared is sponsored by HelloFresh. So if you wanna know how I made this delicious delight, stay tuned. So the good thing about HelloFresh is that it offers a wide variety of things that make it very simple and easy for you to choose from. They have a whole selection of quick, ready to make meals. Today I've chosen to cook the mozzarella stuffed caprese burgers. That's because I'm Watcher's resident beef boy as you puppet history fans would know. HelloFresh offers a lot of healthy options for you. That's low cal, carb smart, good for your heart, things like that. If you're like me who has the palate of a raccoon and eats things out of a trash can, this is very helpful because I will usually only cook microwavable pizza if you consider pressing start cooking. Another thing about HelloFresh is that all of their ingredients and produce is sourced directly from farmers and it gets to you faster than if you went to the grocery store. HelloFresh has up to 50 different menu items, so you're never really gonna get bored. Also, one of the things that I didn't like about cooking was that I had to meal prep or get all the ingredients ready to have to go to the store. That's all cut out. They send you all the stuff prepped, ready to go. You throw it on the burner here or the oven and you're, you get to flip it. They do look beautiful, I might say so myself, all made by yours truly. Cheers. That's delicious. Maybe I should be a chef. That's what HelloFresh makes you feel like. Okay, that does it for us here. Go to hellofresh.com and use code WATCHER14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Now, back to the show and are you scared? Lack of sleep can reportedly be fatal, but all cases of sleep deprived death have been anecdotal. Roughly 11 days was the longest a human has stayed awake before reaching a breaking point, which offers the chilling quandary of what would happen if you were forced to push through your perceived limit. Would you perish or just the perception? And what would remain if you survived? In tonight's story, five unfortunate souls will find out. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madej the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. The Russian Sleep Experiment. In the late 1940s, Russian researchers kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and five inch thick glass porthole windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots with no bedding to sleep on, running water, toilets, and enough dried food to last all five people for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. You only get five items to bring into the chamber for 30 days. What are you bringing? Five well, items. First, top of the list, kazoo. Okay, that would make sense if you were in the chamber by yourself. Let's say I'm in the chamber with you. Kazoo's top of the list. Well, I'm going to immediately veto the kazoo because I don't okay. want to hear you. Then my second kazoo. item is also a kazoo. So you could take a kazoo from me. I got a backup kazoo. What if I take that kazoo? I confiscate I'm bringing it. a third kazoo. A third kazoo. You're You've using me... three of your five items on a kazoo. Well, we have to make it at least five days. So I'm busting one of these out every single day. I'm bringing five kazoos. I mean, after 30 days, I, I think I'm going to perhaps take that kazoo and put it somewhere else. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past, and the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were, and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. If we're trapped in a chamber with each other for five days, we're already speaking nonsense right now and we're 
somewhat well rested. Yeah. I wonder what we would talk about if we were really out of it for five days. Movies. Everybody else would be like, you know, pulling their hair out and whispering to the walls. And we'd be like, I thought the third act of Tenet was a little weak. <laughs> There'd be, you know, blood all over the walls. And we'd be like, hey, those guys went kind of crazy anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys do direct deposit? <laughs> Initially, researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, one of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. The researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until another of the captives started to scream. The three non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped. They had books? They had books. There was books in the chamber for them to read, but they thought it would be better to make paper mache turds. But I mean, it does get worrisome that they've covered their field of view and now you don't know what's happening in there and now they're not screaming. After the screaming stopped, so did the whispering to the microphones. After three more days passed with no visibility into the chamber, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working, since it seemed impossible that no sound could be coming from a room with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice respond. We no longer want to be freed. Oh, gotta ask, why are these people surprised at what they have wrought? You're locking people up for two weeks mm. with no sleep. What did they think was gonna happen? They're like, oh boy, it looks like we really done something. We, we done a flooper. I guess you would want to see like what would happen when they die, when their bodies start to adapt and maybe they don't need sleep. Maybe they're trying to create like a super soldier of some sort. I just imagine them just kicking things off and being like, this is going to be pretty fucked up. <laughs> and then two weeks later being like, well, I guess it is pretty fucked yeah, up. Yeah, like it started in a bar. They're like, I wonder what would happen. You know what would be extremely fucked? If we just made a bunch of dudes stay awake for a long time. Oh shit, dude, you're a fucking madman. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more response using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air and immediately voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging as if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the gas back on. Despite the chaos, the chamber was opened. Soldiers were sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state that any of them were in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched, there were chunks of meat from the dead test subjects' thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking it and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Though precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth as the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. The abdominal organs below the ribcage of all four living test subjects had been removed. 
while the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place. The skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the rib cage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Sounds like a Saturday at the Madej household <laughs> if you ask me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't be doing it. I'd be impressed. I'd be like, wow, you guys are, you, you nailed it. Holy shit. Uh, it's even worse than holy we Holy shit, guys. <laughs> holy shit. That's You're actually... even freakier than we thought you would be. You're doing some real freaky stuff out Once here. Once I, I saw the poop, I was like, holy shit, but now I can see this guy's fucking heart. Do you see that? <laughs> Though most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, many refused to return to the chamber to remove the test subjects. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. That's like a monkey. <laughs> They're doing monkey stuff. I just, the brutal <laughs> image of someone ripping my testicles off and it then showing them to me in my intent. It doesn't seem just, fun. Just <laughs> Imagine the person being like, hey, uh, can you hold my intestines for a second? <laughs> You'd be like, yeah. And they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> be like ah, come on, man. Another five of the soldiers committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured and he bled out almost immediately. The researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of a morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor. Even after his heart stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating the word more over and over, weaker and weaker until he finally fell silent. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begging for the gas demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought out to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a four inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even with the weight of a 200 pound soldier holding him down. It took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. In his autopsy, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal level of oxygen. The muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle to not be subdued, most of them from the force his own muscles had exerted on them. The second survivor had been the first to start screaming when the experiment started. With his vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object to surgery and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested reluctantly that they tried the surgery without anesthetic and did not react for the entire six hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. <laughs> As a sicko, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually how I order food every time when I go to a restaurant. I don't say what I want. I have the you server make, go <laughs> down, down the, menu. the menu, and when they get to what I want, I go. <laughs> the surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should not be medically possible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. I like the idea of him uh, like only doing it when she's looking though, like if another doctor comes in, he's like. <laughs> what if he was flirting? Maybe. <laughs> what if he like just this thought she was turn cute? into a love story? Yeah, this is a meet cute. When the surgery ended, the subject attempted to speak and after failing to do so, was fetched a pen and pad to relay his message. It was simple. 
keep cutting. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a paralytic due to the fact that the surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given. I must remain awake. The remaining two subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, a former KGB agent, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. I just drop them off at a mall or something. Yeah, that's kind of how you start the zombie apocalypse, though. So I don't know if we should drop them off at the local arcade. Well, but in the interest of, um, again, putting ourselves in the shoes of monsters, it would be pretty fucked up. It would be pretty fucked up. I guess if your goal is chaos, yeah. let's see how these people interact with people at the at Nathan's Hot Dogs. Yeah, yeah. You know, see just, how they take to a Wetzel's pretzel. Yeah. <laughs> just see what happens. God damn, I'm thinking about pretzels now. The researchers strongly objected, but were overruled. The subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, both stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. At this point, both were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One subject was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. His brain waves were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering from brain death before returning to normal. As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brain waves immediately changed to that of a deep sleep then flatlined as his heart simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flatlines as the one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. One of the researchers immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a bed, as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. What are you? He screamed at the man strapped to the table. I must know. The subject smiled. What's he gonna say? Wait, I wanna put my money on it. I, I, I could see ahead, so I do know what he's Okay, he here's my guess. I am God. That's pretty good. Is it close? Uh, no, oh. no, no, no. What would you say? What would I say? This is CNN. <laughs> <laughs> we are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out, so nearly free. So, are you scared? Well, I guess like the, the idea is that our, our madness is kind of quelled sure. when we go to sleep. When we go to sleep. But then if you're not sleeping, it slowly takes over. We're all bottles of Dr. Pepper. Waiting. Waiting to be shook. The name of this story was The Russian Sleep Experiment. It was written by an anonymous writer. So thank you to whoever wrote this. What do you think of the idea that for a long time, this was floating around the internet and a lot of people believe this was a real thing? Well, a lot of people on the internet are children. So yeah. yeah I got a spoiler it. alert for you. It's not a real story. Which isn't to say that atrocities have not been committed by people and that they do freaky experiments on them, but uh, no lack of sleep turns you into Captain Barbosa from Curse of the Black Pearl. Well, sleep tight, everybody. Get some sleep.
Ha, 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 ha.